question number 11. What is the measure of each exterior angle of a regular octagon? Is it A, 45, B, 40, C, 36, or D, 30 degrees? I'll give you 5 seconds to think about your answer. Okay, my dear math learners, talking about exterior angle, you should remember that whatever polygon you have, the total measurement of an exterior angle of a certain polygon will always be 360 degrees. Now, if you have 360 degrees, you just divide that to that number of sides given. So, talking about octagon, what you will do is you just have eight sides, right? So, the 360 degrees divided by 8 sides, that means 360 divided by, very good, 8, and you will have, very good, that is 45 degrees. Let's check whether we are correct. Alright, my dear math learners, let us go to question number 12. What is the measure of each interior angle of a regular pentagon? Is it A? 100 degrees, B, 108 degrees, C, 120 degrees, or D, 135 degrees. I'll give you 5 seconds to think about your answer. Alright, my dear math learners, talking about interior angle, the measure of an interior angle, you can still apply what we have known in getting the total measure of a certain polygon, that is N minus 2 times 180. Now, when you get the total measurement of a certain polygon, you just divide it by its number of sides. Of course, in this case, we have a pentagon. So, if it is a pentagon, then that is 5 minus 2 times 180. So, 5 minus 2, that is 3, right? So, 3 times 180, that would give you, very good, that would give you 540 degrees. Now, that is not yet the answer because that is the total measurement of the pentagon, okay? The interior angles of a pentagon. So, your 540 degrees, you just divide it by 5, okay? So, 540 divided by 5, that would give you 108 degrees and that is letter B. Let's check whether we are correct. Alright, my dear math learners, now let us go to question number 13. A convex octagon has interior angles measuring 120 degrees, 135 degrees, 142 degrees, 125 degrees, 138 degrees, 130 degrees, and 145 degrees. What is the sum of the measures of the remaining interior angles? Alright, so is it A, 145 degrees, B, 155 degrees? C, 165 degrees, or D, 175 degrees. I'll give you 5 seconds to think about your answer. Okay, my dear math learners. Now, this question is very easy. Why? Because you have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 measurements of the octagon. Now, octagon has 8 angles, right? Of course, it also has 8 sides. Now, if you have 8 angles and then 7 angles are already given, so what you will do is you just add all the 7 and then subtract it from the total measurement of your octagon. Of course, if we try to solve this one, that would mean N minus 2 times 180. And since you have an octagon, that means 8 sided minus 2 times 180 and 8 minus 2 is 6 times 180 so therefore we have already known that 6 times 180 from our earlier discussion is 1080 degrees now this 1080 degrees you just subtract all the 7 given okay given angles so, when you subtract 120, 135, 142, 125, 138, 130, and 145 to 1080 degrees, what's left is the final answer. And I think the answer for this one is 145 degrees. Let's check whether we are correct. 
All right, my dear math learners, I hope that is clear to you. Let us go to question number 14. A convex hexagon has exterior angles measuring 55, 70, 45, 80, and 65. What is the measure of the sixth exterior angle? Is it A, 35, B, 40, C, 45, or D, 50? I'll give you 5 seconds to think about your answer. Okay, my dear math learners. Now, in this question, we are talking about exterior angles. Now, remember what I have said in our previous review that talking about the total measure of the exterior angles of a certain polygon, it will always be a circle. Meaning, the total measurement of a circle is 360 degrees. Now, we have here a hexagon, right? Given we have five angles, 55, 70, 45, 80, and 65, you just add them and then subtract it to 360 degrees. And by subtracting, it means you will be having the final answer, which is very good, 45 degrees. I think that is the answer. All right, my dear math learners, I am correct. So 55 plus 70 plus 45 plus 80 plus 65, the answer is, I think, 315. And then you just add subtract it from 360 degrees which is the total measurement of the exterior angles of a certain polygon so you have 60 you have 45 degrees all right now let us go to question number 15 what is the sum of the exterior angles of a convex pentagon is it a 540 degrees B, 360 degrees, C, 720 degrees, or D, 180 degrees I'll give you five seconds to think about your answer Okay, my dear math learners, very easy. I have been talking this earlier. So, the total measurement of an exterior angle is always 360 degrees. All right. So, that is letter B. Let's check. Okay. I hope you got that one. Now, let us go to question number 16. What is the equivalent fraction of 0.6 or 6 tenths in simplest form? Is it A, 6 tenths? B, three-fifths, C, two-thirds, or D, one-half. I'll give you five seconds to think about your answer. Okay, my dear math learners, if we try to read this number, this is read as six-tenths. Of course, if you are converting that to a fraction, this will be the value, six-tenths. However, six-tenths, can still be simplified you can still get the lowest term of it and by getting the greatest common factor for 6 and 10 that is 2 so you divide both numerator and denominator by 2 you will have the lowest term which is very good letter b three fifths so letter b is the correct answer let's check whether we are right all right my dear math learners now let us go to question number 17 what is 5, 6 divided by 3 eighths. Is it A, 15 over 48, B, 20 over 9, C, 9 over 20, or D, 4 thirds? I'll give you 5 seconds to think about your answer. Okay, my dear math learners, I'll show you first how to solve or how to divide fractions. Now, in dividing fractions, basically, you can apply KFC. What does KFC mean? You keep, you flip, and then you... Right. So how do you do that? Okay, so here is the way. So what we have here is 5 over 6 divided by 3 eighths. Okay, so what we do is you keep, you keep the first, right? Then you flip. So you flip this one, this 3 over 8, that will become 8 over over 3 and then you multiply okay so in multiplying fractions numerator times numerator denominator times denominator so you have 5 times 8 that is 40 6 times 3 that is 18 and if you simplify this by dividing the greatest common factor of 40 and 18 that is 2 so you will have 
40 divided by 2 is 20. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So therefore, the correct answer is 20 over 9. Letter D. Let's check whether we are correct. All right, my dear math learners, very easy. Now, let us go to question number 18. Which fraction is greater than 4 sevenths? Is it a 3 eighths, b 5 twelfths, c 2 thirds, or d 7 15? I'll give you 5 seconds to think about your answer. So my dear math learners, in determining which fraction is greater than 4 sevenths, first you need to consider is 4 sevenths greater than 50% or half of 7. So half of 7 is 3.5, right? So 4 is greater than 3.5. Therefore, any fraction that has a numerator that is greater than half of its denominator, then that could cons be considered as the answer. Now, if we check letter A, we have 8 here. Half of 8 is 4, but our numerator is 3. So therefore, this is wrong. How about B? 5 twelves. 12, the half of 12 is 6, and our numerator is only 5. This is not yet in. This, this is not yet more than um, half. So letter B is also wrong. Let's go to 15. 15 here. If you divide 15, that would be 7.5. And 7.5 is still greater than the numerator, which is 7. So therefore, the correct answer here is letter C. Because 2 thirds is equivalent to 0 0.66666. Non-terminating and repeating decimal. Which is, in percentage, that is 67% or 66.67%. Okay, which is greater than 50%. So let's check whether we are correct. All right, my dear math learners, now let us go to question number 19. What is 75% in decimal form? Is it A, 0 0.075, B, 0 0.75, C, 7.5, or D, 0 0.0075? I'll give you five seconds to think about your answer. Okay, my dear math learners, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm just reading the decimal in a convenient way but it is not yet the proper way because letter a if we read this one this is 75 thousandths based on the place value of the decimals however for letter b this is 75 hundreds while c that is seven and five tenths and letter d is 75 ten thousands because this is Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Okay. Now, talking about 75%. Percent is basically uh, in comparison to 100. Okay? Because 100% is equal to 1, which is the whole value. Okay? The whole the whole part. Okay? And then 75% is three-fourth of that part. Now, converting it to decimal, you just move the decimal place from its decimal point which is for in the case of 75 the decimal point is in this in this part okay just check the arrow and then you just move it two places to the left okay so one two so therefore the decimal will be here before seven and that is letter d all right now let's check whether we are correct okay my dear math learners easy now let us go to question number 20. Anna scored 85% on a test with a total possible score of 120. How many points did she get? Is it A, 98, B, 100, C, 102, or D, 104? I'll give you 5 seconds to think about your answer. Okay, my dear math learners, in getting the actual uh, points Anna get, in her test which is a total of 120 and 85 percent of that is her points what you will do is you just multiply it so 120 times 85 percent now when you are multiplying a number to a percentage you need to convert that value that percentage into a decimal so the same as the case in the previous question you just move two decimal places to the left so that will become 0.85 or 85 hundreds. So 120 times 85 hundreds. So the value of that 
or the answer for that will be your correct answer now if i consider this question i think the correct answer here is 102 because when you multiply 120 times 0.85 or 85 hundreds the answer is 102 let's check whether we are correct all right my dear math learners of course i just like to congratulate you for finishing two parts of our reviewer series you are halfway now in our preparation for the first quarter examination 20 more questions to go so now let us go to part three 